that game that allowed it that you could true press enter twice and do local timer equals how long can we click this is the game timer for how long you can for how many times you can click in this amount of time so it's local timer equals 10 seconds you have 10 seconds to click as many times as you can click the E button or press it I mean and do and just do the same thing with the top just do repeat wait one timer equals timer minus one gy.game.toplabel.test equals timer until timer is less than or equal to zero and now and now the game is finished you have your 10 seconds your time is up so now you go down to two enters you do wait not wait you don't don't put away you put gy that game dot allow that value equals false that turns the debounce back off so now you put um, gui now put wait one and now this is where you display your own like good message to the player for doing a good job do the GUI dot game dot top label dot text equals let's say good job something and now just telling the player he did a good job he clicked as many times as he can in 10 seconds so now you put enter wait 5 so the player has time to see how many times he clicked and now do GUI GY dot game dot game dot visible equals false. Put a wait one and do GUI dot game dot visible equals true. Not game dot menu dot visible equals true. Now enter. This is where you turn the debounce back on. Put game dot allow that value equals true. Enter gy dot game dot game on that value equals false. Oh, I'm sorry, you forgot to put the game on at the top. You and this is when you turn the game on. Gui dot game dot game on. It's not located in game. It's located in the menu. Menu that game on that value equals true. So let's fix this menu. Menu. GUI that menu that allow that value equals true. And GUI that menu that game on that value equals true. So now that's that's how the game is being played. That's how the game starts up. So now down to where this end is, the first end, after you finish typing game that menu that game on that value equals true, just press enter. And now you put else if TV dot screen dot GUI dot mainframe dot game GUI dot menu that game on that value is equal to true now this is where when the game is turned on and now you're clicking E to do to do the game to press how many times you can in 10 seconds so now this is this is pretty basic you just do GUI dot game dot clicks that value equals GUI that game that clicks that value that's setting it to itself. First of all, you have to put the GUI variable TV that screen that GUI that mainframe that game GUI. So now is 
the clicked value it equals to itself plus one. That's adding on a click to how many you had before. And now you do GUI dot game dot score label dot text equals GUI dot game dot clicks dot value. And that's displaying how many clicks you have right now. And that's pretty basic, just four lines of easy coding. You just do local GUI, that's the variable to get to the game GUI much easier. GUI.game.clicks.value equals GUI.game.clicks.value plus one. And now you're changing the score label text to whatever how many clicks there is. And that's it. So so now to quit to quit the game. So now we when you're playing a game on the console in the data folder, it's RBS4 the data folder, you go to it says playing and when you're playing a game this will be enabled. So now when you when you quit, this is pretty much all you have to do. Let's go back to where the if was as if button is equal to enter. So now you do else if button is equal to quit. Now that's the button you use to quit, which is P1 comma quit, which is Q. So now So now you want to after this you put then enter if TV dot screen dot GUI dot mainframe dot game GUI dot menu dot game on that value is equal to false because on the this is where you quit the game if you're on the menu you press Q to quit the game. You can't quit the game while you're actually playing the game, so so now this is all you have to do, just do main model dot data 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 dot playing that value equals false. Enter wait two seconds. And that turns it off. That turns the game off. It goes back to the main menu on the console. And that's pretty much it for this for this event script. As you can see, yes, okay. So that's all you need for the event script. You have your button is equal to enter. You're checking if the game is false, the game is false, then you're starting the game up. If the game is true, then you're changing the clicks. Button is equal to quit. Let's say, let's say if you want to add a sound. So now, I already have some sounds. I already made some. This is for the bouncy bird game. I'm gonna just take the sound from that and just say add point. This is the add point. So now you just copy the ID at the top. Where did we go? Oh. So now you do. Go to the sounds folder that's inside the game GUI. You just insert a new sound. Name it to add point. And now go to your properties. Change the volume to 0 0.35 because that's the that's the volume that I set the the screen, the menu sounds. That's what that's the default volume I put it to. So that's where you want all your other sounds because you don't want it overlapping or a sounding offset or anything. So now go back to your properties. Change on the sound ID, you just hit control plus V. And there's your ID. You just press enter. And it will already make the before thing for RBS asset ID colon backslash backslash. So and that's it. That's not backslash, that's a regular slash. So, so now you have a, your own sound for the game. Now, all you have to do now is go back to the event script. 
and you see where the game is on and you're changing your clicks just go down to press enter and do TV dot screen dot add point play and that plays the add point sound say back in the star script what we did before so now in the star script I didn't make it yet in the stars go back to the star script just copy this right here where we where we cloned the functions in it just copy that press space not space press enter two times control V change GY functions change it to GY sounds where it says a dot parent just put a dot parent equals TV dot screen that puts that puts the sound into the screen and now you just delete this a dot event dot the script a event script dot disable equals false just just take that out because there's no event script in the sound so that's pretty it for that now you have your own sound now you have your function your game event so now back where in the starting script just press enter two times now we're gonna make it where it shows the menu so go back to the game turn off not turn it off make it invisible turn the game visible off and turn the menu visible off so now all you do now is put the weight down here weight 3 and do GY dot menu dot visible equals true enter GY dot players button script dot disabled equals false that turns off this and that's and that's giving the, P, the P1 player that gives them the menu script so they can play the game enter GUI dot GUI dot menu dot allow that value equals true that turns the debounce on so you can start playing with the game and that's pretty much it so now you have your own game you have your star script your players button script here's the star script if you didn't see it there you go so now so now you have your game GUI, you got everything you pretty much need. You don't have to turn the game GUI off, you can just leave that on and just drag it back to where it originally originally was in the disk, the game data and the disk, the disk GUI, drag that into the disk GUI. And there you go. So so now you have your your game GUI back where it originally was, you have your your game setup, all that. Now, thank you guys for watching this part three version of how to make a game for the console. Like this video, comment if you have any problems. I'll get back to you on that. And thanks for watching. Peace.